SteamOS coming to more devices. There's also more RX 8000 cards and Intel's in some real trouble. This may be why Pat was let go. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, December 6, 2024. We're gonna start off with a little reminder that we do have a PC giveaway currently going on over on our Twitch stream, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. This is a 9950X 4080 super system in this Thermal Take Tower 600 in the matcha green. Looks absolutely gorgeous. If you join us over there, you can find out how to win the giveaway. It's going to be drawn on December 19th, so you have a couple weeks to still enter before that happens. But we'd love to have you over there. And I would love to have more SteamOS in my life. And Valve actually has some new branding guidelines for the expansion of this amazing operating system. The OS that powers the Steam Deck is looking to go to other devices, so there's new branding guidelines for powered by SteamOS. OS. This was found in a guidance document about being Steam compatible, Steam OS, all of that kind of stuff. And you can see that it's well thought out and detailed about all of the branding guidelines that they would do. Powered by Steam OS, all of that various stuff that we want to see potentially coming to newer devices. We've obviously discussed in the past about Steam OS potentially being enabled on the ROG Ally. It hasn't made it just yet, even though there has been support baked into the operating system, but I want to see this more and more different and handhelds, potentially even a desktop version would be fantastic. Converting all of the beauty of PC gaming into the simplicity of console gaming is something that I definitely would want to rock on my home system. But it was also found in a Steam Deck kernel change that potentially Valve is working on some sort of Nvidia Shield TV-like device, potentially a set-top box slash gaming console that allows you to just get some basic gaming done on your television. It's powered by an AMD Lilac processor which is not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but could potentially keep up with what's currently out there. This is intriguing to see. Uh, we've also obviously seen the Steam Controller too. Maybe that's going to go hand in hand with this new Valve device that's going to be coming out, or this might just be in development and they're not planning on releasing it. Either way, very excited for this. Super excited for the future of SteamOS and Valve and everything that they're doing in order to make Linux gaming more mainstream. I want to see more and more of that happen. And, you know, I try the world with my Steam Deck, brought it to Taiwan, played a lot of Bellatra on it, and uh, when we go back to Computex this coming year, you bet I'm going to use today's video sponsor. You know what's the worst part about traveling? Struggling to take calls from friends and family who are back home. And that's where today's sponsor, Sally, comes in. Sally is an eSIM service app whose goal is to make staying in touch abroad easier than ever. As a tech creator who lived in South Africa, moved back to America, kept team members in South Africa, and travels for conventions like Computex, an eSIM is a great option for when I travel. Next time I plan to visit South Africa, hopefully sooner rather than later, or like recently, bring some team members over to the States, it's as simple as downloading the app to your mobile device, choosing your region, and selecting your plan. With multiple plans in over 160 countries and eight regions, Sailing covers a huge portion of the globe. Once you have your region selected, simply install the eSIM, which your phone takes you through step by step. Then your eSIM will activate instantly upon entering the country or region you selected. Sailing is also super convenient for trips with multiple locations, like when we stop in South Africa on the way to Taiwan for Computex. I can install Sailing's single eSIM and get coverage for both countries I'll be visiting. Sailing continues to make it easier for anyone to stay connected while they travel, being compatible for all eSIM capable iOS and Android devices. Better yet, if you find out your device can't support eSIMs, Sailey offers a full refund. I totally see Sailey being my eSIM of choice for my next trip back to South Africa. Again, hopefully sometime in 2025. Being able to download the app to my phone once and have virtually unlimited eSIM options is going to make travel a breeze. Change the way you travel with Sailey right now. You get an exclusive 15% discount on Sailey eSIM data plans. Download the Sailey app and use code UFDTech at checkout. Check them out here via the QR code on the screen or via the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Sailey for sponsoring. Well, in case you use Sailey to get some data abroad, you're not going to be able to download your NVIDIA drivers with it via GeForce Experience anymore because NVIDIA is cutting the cord on that. They're moving all of the driver downloads over to their brand new 
fresh all-in-one NVIDIA app, GeForce Experience has gotten its latest graphics driver, the last one ever, the 566.36. It'll be the last time you can update your graphics card driver through the GeForce Experience, and instead you have to migrate on over to the NVIDIA app, which is a bit of a bummer that they're doing that so soon. It's kind of frustrating that it's only been out for less than a month and they're kind of forcing everybody on over to it, but it doesn't require a login like GeForce Experience does, so there is at least some okayness here. You just have to download it. It's not necessarily gonna require you to sign up for anything. I'm not a huge fan of it, but at the same time, it's not too detrimental. And I'm a huge fan of uh, what AMD's got cooking with their upcoming GPUs. We got some more details coming out about the RX 8000 series. We're finding out that there potentially could be an 8800 and an 8600 GPU uh, coming out to the next generation. This was being found in the Rockham library or Radeon Open Compute library, which indicates that there are desktop chips for the 8800 and 8600 family of cards. This is notable because we discussed in a recent episode of Hot News, the 8700 XT, which according to reports might have been the highest end AMD GPU we would get on the RX 8000 series. If it goes up even higher, that could potentially mean more performance that they're uh, looking to beat out the 7900 XTX that's currently out on the market. Whether or not that's true, or if this is just something that's been in testing, and that they're gonna put it in a uh, Rockham library and it's not actually gonna manifest in sale remains to be seen, but it's intriguing that they're developing that. And let's see what deals Reese developed you. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good week. And I've got a couple of good deals for you today, starting off with this Epo Maker Shadow X wireless hot swappable gasket mount mechanical keyboard, which is going for only $42.99, making it $53 or 50% off and a great start for a project board. But then next up, we have this Zelman i3 Neo TG ATX case, plus four of their 120 millimeter infinity mirror ARGB fans going for only $57.98, making it $27.01 off. And then lastly, we have this ASRock B650M AM5 MATX motherboard going for only $99.99, making it $60 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like we're getting a good deal on Intel's GPUs. Obviously, we discussed Battle Mage that got unveiled earlier this week. The B580, B570 look to be at least compelling at the price point that they're coming in at. However, Tom Peterson, also affectionately known as TAP, went on the Full Nerd podcast to discuss that this isn't the end of the line for Intel's GPU department. Battle Mage is not gonna be the last set of discrete GPUs that we see from them. And in fact, XE3 and X. XE4 are definitely in the picture, specifically saying that XE3, the hardware, is pretty much baked. So essentially it's just moving over to software where they're gonna have to work on the drivers and optimization and making sure that this thing works with all the varied systems out there. And now the hardware team is moving on over to XE4. XE3 is codenamed Celestial. We'll be talking more about that in the months and years to come. And then XE4 is allegedly codenamed Druid. And again, we'll discuss that as relevant things come up. Just wanna give a quick shout out to the full nerd podcast from PC World. Adam talking with Tap. Uh, every time I've met any member of PC World, whether it's been at CES or Computex, uh, love chatting with these guys. It's been fantastic to get to know them. So highly recommend if you're looking for a PC hardware enthusiast podcast to kind of know more about in-depth things going on in the space, fully highly recommend The Full Nerd by PC World. So go check them out in case that's of interest to you. And well, Intel's GPUs are interesting. It's also interesting what's been going on politically with them in terms of them ousting their CEO, Pat Gelsinger. He technically retired, but it's very weird how it happened. It got announced a couple days into December, but they backdated his retirement to December 1st, which is not something I've ever seen happen before. So there's a lot of fishiness going on. Why did they let go of Pat? It wasn't quite clear, but there are new reports coming out from sources indicating that it might be due to their 18A node not being up to snuff. The Korean publication Chosun indicating that the 18A node has abysmal yields coming in at 10%, making it unfit for mass production and worse than even Samsung's worst yields. This is not the first we're hearing about this. Back in September, we got details from Reuters indicating that Broadcom got a sample of the 18A node and it was essentially unusable. And with this newest report, it's being indicated that Broadcom now knows 
even more about how this is not working out. So they're finding other people to manufacture this next generation of chips that they're trying to put on Intel's 18A node. So having a yield rate of less than 10% is not good. It's very problematic for what's going on over at Intel. And the idea could potentially be that especially with Pat going very heavily into Intel's foundry services, their IFS, product roadmap trying to make it so that they're gonna be a company that makes chips for other companies very much like TSMC. Their 18A node, which was supposed to be the kind of linchpin node that they were depending on to make this idea work, if it's not coming up working, then it could put the company in massive uh, financial strain moving forward. And allegedly, according to Chosun, this was uh, heavily behind the reason why Pat Gelsinger was forced out at Intel. Obviously, it's not 100% set in stone that this is why that happened, but it is obviously strange that Pat Gelsinger, with no forewarning, and especially just a couple days before talking about the future of Intel, just up and leaves the company, doesn't even get an advisory role, doesn't stay on the board of directors, kind of just uh, hanging around, nothing. Just complete severance, just, I, I believe the number was $12 million to just leave the company alone. The other times that I've seen that happen, it's because they have lost faith in their CEO. Uh, I believe uh, Meg Whitman uh, got that when she was the CEO of eBay. She was not doing a good job. Ah, but you guys do a good job of leaving comments. So let's check out what you said in Wednesday's episode of Hot News, which um, I'm just realizing now I wanted to say this at the top of the episode, but I forgot. The reason I missed yesterday's episode of Hot News is because my wife had our fourth child. Hi! It's, it's great. Mom and baby are doing incredibly well. Everything's going smoothly at home. I'm just obviously exhausted. So yesterday, I just, I could not bring myself to leave my house, uh, film hot news, get all of that done. Today, everything's going a little bit better uh, in terms of my, um, energy levels, so I'm here doing it. This is just how it's gonna be for the next little bit in terms of uh, content getting out there for this full length stuff. If I can, I will, and if I don't feel like I can, I won't. But I also have a procedure next week that is going to prevent me from having more children, hopefully, uh, and that will also take me out of commission for a little bit. So December's gonna be a weird month for UFD Tech. That was a weird thing to announce here, but you're welcome. You know more about my personal life now, and I wanna know more about what you're thinking. We got Jeff saying, Nvidia advertises 4060 as the best GPU for 1080p at ultra settings, while Intel advertises Battlemage is the best for 1440p at ultra settings. It's probably the extra VRAM. I don't think the B580 is the perfect GPU for 1440p Ultra. I think it's gonna be good at it. I don't think it's gonna be the perfect one, but uh, yeah, that's why you gotta take uh, companies own benchmarks with a grain of salt and you have to wait for third party stuff to find out exactly what's going on. But if you get a decent 1440p card for 250 odd dollars, that's better than what you could find new from other companies. So we'll see. Pika Lover saying, remember, more competition is always better. Not always. Not always. It, it can be uh, detrimental and uh, distracting and harmful sometimes, but uh, not usually. Then GameShot saying, hype is building around Intel new cards. Hopefully they deliver. I also hope so. I've seen uh, several other uh, tech creators have gotten their hands on the B580. We don't have one um, on hand, nor do I think we are getting one anytime soon. I probably will have to buy one at retail and then we'll have to wait and see how long it takes for us to get our review out. Just kind of like with the 9800X3D that took us, I think, uh, two, three weeks after it launched just because we don't get pre-release samples. So um, we're working on that and uh, I, I hope it's good as well. Then we got Andre saying, I love the phrase, we judge ourselves based on our motivations, but we judge others based on their actions. It feels honest, human, explains a lot of our expectation bias towards people, but Eggplant saying, Brett really pushing he's a human at the end there, kind of suspicious. Can we watch you complete a CAPTCHA? Uh, well, just to, I don't know if you know this, a lot of people do. CAPTCHAs are made to train uh, LLMs, large language models. It's actually used to make AIs better so the AIs can actually complete the captures. That's why they do it, to get more data. So me completing a capture wouldn't necessarily prove anything to you. But to get back to Andre's statement of uh, what I said, we judge ourselves based on motivations and we judge others based on their actions. I think it's just something I really try to keep in mind. I'm not better than anybody, even if, you know, I have the hypocritical stance that I think I am, right? You know, I, I ultimately experienced myself as a complete human individual, uh, a, a, a full person with the, the multitudes that come with humanity, and I tend to not give that uh, benefit of the doubt towards other people, and uh, I think the world is better when I do, when I treat other people as if they also contain multitudes and they have various motivations and you can uh, not just assume the worst 
worst of everybody from the get-go. I don't know how much that ethos really works when I'm talking about graphics cards and uh, CPUs, but it's definitely the mindset I really try to bring to, to most areas of how we conduct business as a company here and all of that. Then we got Gamerpunk saying, I was thinking, now that Intel are making graphics cards, I wonder if Intel can pull some magic when coupled with an Intel CPU. Um, probably not on desktop. One of the things that uh, AMD figured out a few years ago was on laptops, if you, because they're making the whole system CPU and GPU, they can kind of come up with a software that allows them to dynamically uh, divert power from one to the other, making it so that you get more GPU power when the CPU is not operating because they understand the totality of the system. But uh, not likely, like AMD would have figured this out by now. Uh, if you could put an AMD card with an AMD CPU, it would be better. But also uh, that invokes like the last time, um, I think I, discuss this with other people. It just like that's antitrust issues, right? Like you're you're giving yourself an unnecessary competitive advantage because the only way that I, I'm aware that you would be able to make it so that your GPU works better with your CPU is making other companies perform worse. Uh, so I don't know, we'll see. Then Sketchstorm asking, with those controllers in the background, do they have stick drift? Not that I'm aware of. So the controllers that are in the background, that Astrobot controller, it's new. I, I got it recently, it doesn't have stick drift. We just thought it looked really good on the set. So we did that. I, I was using that at home. Uh, I replaced it with a different controller. The ones over here, that's an Amazon Luna controller. Never used it, bought it to do an Amazon Luna video like four years ago and just, ended up not moving forward with it. So it's just it's just an unused controller. That Starfield controller, uh, we used it for one video. I believe it was the Lenovo Legion Super Ultra Wide monitor video. Um, we got it for that and we didn't have another use for it besides it looks very cool. And then that's my Stadia Founders Edition controller, which I haven't updated to be supported with Bluetooth. I don't, I'm not really uh, too interested in doing that. I mean, I could. Uh, but it's it's just a set piece at this point. I didn't I didn't need another controller. It just it also looks good. So that's what's happening there. And then our Legion Go up there works totally fine. I just I prefer my Steam Deck OLED right now. So uh, that sits on the shelf right there. Ah, but then we got Wazgoo saying Fortnite balls. Thank you. Make of that what you will. Uh, judge me how you will by that. I will judge myself based on my motivations, you will judge me based on my actions, and I will see you back here next week for more hot news.